Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Northeast Wisconsin Signature Event, checking in 8110R Top Gear. What a phenomenal season so far. Uh, four wins, including uh, winning MOA Signature Event a few months ago as well. So congratulations on that. Triple crown, uh, tons of awards with excellence as well, too. So this robot, really a complete machine. Uh, a rebuild from like a month ago or so from a couple events, but lots of cool stuff we're going to be covering on this. We're going to be talking about their meta change, uh, how they're approaching a strategy despite having that uh, catapult that they're still using during skills, but not as much during the event. Uh, lots in regards to the wings we'll be covering uh, on this. So, so much to talk about this team. I can't wait to dive more in this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Evan, let's start off talking about some of your strategy changes as you've gone through. You know, uh, since the last time that I saw you, which was back in MOA, a lot has changed in this game so yeah. far. So talking about what that change has been and uh, what some of the uh, uh, methodology has been in regards to your catapult as well. Yeah, so a lot of the game at the beginning of the year was just based on launching the tribals over the center barrier. And so mainly you would either use a flywheel or a catapult or a slapper like we have here. And uh, that was good at the beginning, a very hyper offensive strategy, and it was high scoring. But as the year has gone on, a lot of the strategy has changed with it, and it's become a lot more defensive. So the problem with this launching it over now would be that when the tribal is over the center barrier, you're going to lose out on your control over the tribals. And that allows for other teams to take advantage of them, score them for themselves, um, move them out, or like just push them out of your offensive zone. And this is like basically kind of ruins the launching strategy. When you lose that control, you pretty much lose your advantage. So teams have come up with a lot of different ways to uh, work around that while still match loading because you need to add tri balls into the field. So one of the main ways that we've seen that work is uh, through bowling, and that's where teams set a tri ball in the front of the intake, or two or three around there, and they'll fall off to the front. So then we'll drive forwards and push those into the goal by going through like the center alley. Um, and that's pretty good. You have rings out, and it'll just, it just gives you more control over the tri balls and protection. So you can get a lot more consistent scoring, but like still get a lot of points in. Um, and the other way we've seen is by loading directly into the intake one at a time. And so this is a scenario, um, sorry, this strategy is for a scenario that's uh, where you have a lot of defense being played on you and you can't afford to bowl because bowling can still be blocked. So what you would do is you just put the tribal straight into the intake and that just gives you a much better way to control it and protect it. And so that's kind of just like the major defensive shift that we've seen over the year. Yeah, and, and one of the things I'll, I'll comment on that too, the singer events that we've been at, we've definitely seen that change, especially to more of that tri-ball starvation type strategy, yeah. right? So going that single intake uh, tri-ball makes a lot of sense. How about here at the Wisconsin Singer event? Any new strategies that you've seen so far here? Um, we actually have, one of the matches, uh, Robo Cows, they were up against. They were up against two teams and well, normally we would have thought that they would have won. Uh, one of the teams actually sat on their match load bar and didn't allow any match loads to come out. So they were up on tribals at the beginning, but because they blocked all the match load bars, they just couldn't score anything. So they ended up just like starving them and then hanging at the end and they ended up winning them the match by a few points. So it was very interesting to yeah, see. Yeah, really interesting on that yeah. as well too. Let's talk uh, more about your robot. We're gonna go to, over to Walker, who's gonna talk about uh, a couple things to that. We have a lot to talk about with wings, uh, but let's start out with on your drivetrain. I noticed you got the uh, raised wheels for that. Talk to me more about that config and how it's been working out for you. Yeah, yeah. So with the field this year there are a lot of obstacles and the main obstacle is the middle barriers and the barriers that you need to be able to get over to maneuver around the field effectively. So how we did that is with our drivetrain we have uh, two 3.25 inch wheels on each side of the drive and then two 2.75 inch wheels in the middle and that just helps when we go over the barrier we have a lower center of gravity and the back wheels the 3.25s can push for longer to help us get over the barrier more efficiently are you going over both sides pretty well do you find or do you kind of bias the one one front or back oh uh, yeah so that's that's the thing with center of gravity helps a lot if you have a better center of gravity on the front your front side will go over better and if you have a better center of gravity on the back your back side will go over better so where's it, where's it land for you guys? So on, on ours, we only have wedges on our front side. So our, we put our center of gravity towards the front. And that is why we have our two tanks on our intake on top. And that just helps with the center of gravity. And then also our battery is positioned in front, more forward in front of the robot. Uh, you got a couple different wing configurations that have been really important to your uh, overall match strategy. Talk to me about the side wings you're doing. Yeah, so the side wings in the back, they're drop down wings and uh, those just can't be back driven at all. So there's, those are very effective in skills. And then also for uh, getting the tri-ball out of the corner barrier because we have wedges on the front wings that can't, 
And then we also have our side elevation on our uh, back wings. This is a lot easier to, uh, to hang because of our drive configuration and because we're able to get over the barrier so much easier. So we were, we're able to go up right up right on top of the bar. The bar hits uh, this cut flex wheel right here and grabs on and the bar hangs right in between the two middle 2.75 inch wheels. And I've been working out phenomenal so far. As we're recording this, uh, you're the number one seed uh, here at this event. So I hope that continues for you. Yeah. Uh, John, let's start and wrap up on this robot. Talk about uh, your uh, other wings that you have on your bot too. Talk about that configuration and uh, what you've been doing from a strategy standpoint on it so far. Yeah, so um, like Evan said, the strategy has shifted a lot from shooting to more bowling. And bowling requires pushing um, all of the tri balls underneath the elevation bar in that little corridor there. Um, and one thing that we noticed was a problem is when you try to drive your robot and push those balls through the corridor, the robot isn't as wide as the alley. So um, you, you often have to like back up and like try and maneuver your way to get them all pushed across. And one way that we fix this is with variable strength front wings. So walk if you just want to extend the strong wings. So um, what we do is we have two modes for our front wings. One that's strong, that can't be um, like back driven. And that's better for uh, when we want to push balls into the goal, like a lot at a time. And we also have a different mode, a weaker mode, for when we um, are pushing through the alley that can flex and bend to the shape of the walls. So that, because like I said before, the robot isn't as wide as the corridor and we can't push them as well. With the light, with the light strength wings, they're able to conform to the shape of the wall and fill that whole area and we can push them all at once a lot more effectively. When did you add this onto your robot? Because I love the versatility of the uh, flex, flex wings and locking wings that you bring. Uh, yeah, so I think we, we had it for our last tournament. We were planning on having it two tournaments ago, but um, we couldn't really figure out how to make all the, the pneumatics work. And we had to do a little bit of more clever, like just figuring out how that stuff works and how to make it work on our robot. Um, that was actually kind of interesting, our solution to make this work, because it is a little bit more complicated than we thought it would be. Yeah. Initially, we just tried using a, a double acting solenoid to switch the air between two channels, one that is limited and one that is not. Um, but we had an issue with this because the double acting solenoid, the way it works is it directs air one way and it exhausts the air coming back the other way. Um, and in our solution, the two channels, the limited one and the non-limited one, when we rejoined them with a the T-splitter, the air, the way that the air was coming through would go back down the other way and sure, get exhausted yeah. out the solenoid. So what we had to do um, is use two backwards single acting solenoids. So because they're backwards, they don't allow the air to come through back the other way and they still function normally when they're open. Well, Top Gear overall, phenomenal breakdown to your robot. I think things like this are definitely teams are looking forward to in order to improve themselves. So thank you so much for taking time to tell about your team and your robot. Good luck here at the Northeast Wisconsin Signature Event. I know you're looking for big things, and good luck throughout the rest of the season. We'll see you at championships. Good luck, guys. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.